Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another Borderlands 3 build video. This has literally been the sixth time I've tried to record this video. So I hope to god this is the last one. Anyway, today I'm bringing you guys my Mob Boss Amara build. This is a build perfect for mobbing. It one-shots a lot of bosses. Hence the name Mob Boss. Get it? Mob. Boss. Mobbing. Bossing. It is literally the perfect name. Do not debate me on this. I will physically assault you. Anyway, let's get straight into the gear. So the centerpiece for this build, as you guys might have already guessed or taken a peek at, is going to be the Anarchy Shotgun. This shotgun is absolutely insane. If you guys want to know more about the details or the math behind this weapon, I will leave a video in the video description. It's Karma did a great breakdown and he does really good videos, so I highly suggest you guys go and check out his channel. I didn't watch that video before making this. I've been working on this for like two and a half days, but after watching it, it did reaffirm my faith and beliefs about this weapon. So anyway, the Anarchy, it does a ridiculous amount of damage. Once you stack it up, it can pretty much one-shot everything. It has ricochets built in, similar to Gage's in degree skill from Borderlands 2. So you can, a lot of the times, just one-shot a group of enemies that are really close together. And if enemies aren't so close together, you're going to be able to use Ties That Bind to absolutely wipe an entire room. You should try to get one with 20 pellets if you can, but if you can get one with a decent amount of high base damage and 18 pellets, that is more than okay. You don't need a perfect rolled anarchy to make it work at all. The only thing I suggest you do is you get a radiation one or a cryo one, and the reason for that is because those are the elements that Amara does not have in her skill tree. We are going to be using forceful expression. 99% of the time I use shock, so if you have a radiation one, that combined with shock from forceful expression is going to absolutely destroy shields, and with the anointments from your shield and grenade, in my case I have cryo and corrosive, that is going to absolutely destroy armor. So this is pretty much the perfect loadout for the takedown. The other weapons I like using are a medium to long range uh, single target weapon. This is good for taking care of the guards at the beginning of the raid or those orbs if they're really, really, really far away. The Seventh Sense is an amazing weapon overall. You can even use this to boss if you wanted to. It's really, really strong. You can alternatively use the Clairvoyance, which is an extremely strong weapon. It is amazing. Shoutouts to Typhon De Leon, literally, from Discord for sending this one to me. It is a 5400 damage variant. You can literally one clip Wotan hands lower half with this or one clip grave ward it's it's crazy the other two weapons i have here are completely situational i have a shock lob and a corrosive cutsman for if i ever go down in the wotan fight i'm gonna lose all of my anarchy stacks which kind of makes this gun into a potato for that boss fight so these are just like my you know uh, emergency measures basically but realistically speaking uh if you shoot wotan <laughs> it nothing's really gonna happen to you you're, you're not gonna die with this build, we have an insane amount of lifesteal from maxed out sustainment, which is lifesteal from all elemental damage. We're going to be doing four different types of elements at the same time, and just the insane amount of damage that this thing does. Uh, pretty much, as long as you're shooting, you can't really go down. Like, ever. For your shield, you're going to want an old god with a corresponding elemental anointment. By that, I mean that if you have a cryo-resist old god, you're going to want a cryo-ASC anoint. The reason is because once you actually use your action skill, you're going to get the 50% bonus cryo damage from the anointment, and then that cryo damage is therefore going to be boosted even further by the 20% elemental increase from the matching element old god. That, however, is a perfect dream world roll. You don't need that. That is ideal, so you should try to go for it. But if you can't, that is completely fine. For your grenade, it literally does not matter what grenade you have. It can be literally any grenade. I recommend piss grenades if you can. But the most important part of your grenade is the elemental anoint. You just want to have all the different elements so you can buff your shots, because you're literally never going to chuck your grenade in this build. For the artifact, I am still using the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge, even though it got nerfed, because this is still insanely strong. This is still 105% more damage, which is basically doubling all the damage that you do. You can now make an argument for Elemental Projector, but I think this only really has a place in specific bosses, because you're only going to be doubling the damage of one of your elements. With the Pearl, you're going to be doubling the damage of all your damage. So unless you're doing the sellout strat where you basically uh, set yourself on fire and corrode yourself and electrocute yourself so you have three stacks of this and you're boosting three different elements with elemental projector, which is an insanely painful experience by the way. So basically I have incendiary on the weapon, I'm going to whiff my action skill, so now I have a cryo 
as well as corrosive. Plus, I have forceful expression for my skill tree. So if I shoot myself, I'm going to be suffering from four different elements at the same time. And that is going to boost all the damage of your elements. But while you are playing, you are going to have this insanely vicious screen shake and you are going to be chunking your shield very, very significantly. It is very loud and incredibly annoying. I cannot play like that. <laughs> it makes me suicidal, so unless you can stomach that, go for Elemental Projector. Otherwise, I think Pearl is a more consistent and more general use uh, source of damage. Also guys, something that I did forget to mention is that if you do manage to get your hands on a consecutive Hidden Ointment version of the Energy, it is absolutely insane when you combine it with the Driver Calm and the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge, because whenever you activate your action skill and you hurt yourself like this, um, every single time you take a dot of damage, that is actually going to stack up your consecutive Hidden Ointment as well as your pearl, so you can pretty much have it up all of the time. And since the Anarchy is a weapon that you don't really want to switch off of, because you don't want to lose the stacks and everything, so it just makes perfect sense and it makes for an amazing synergy with the weapon, but that is insanely overkill. You really do not need a consecutive hit anoint, but if you can't get your hands on one, even if it's not 20 pellets, you can definitely make it work and it can definitely make up for that. For your class mod, you are going to want a driver com. This is going to give you more gun damage based on how fast you are moving. So a lot of our skills are going to be focused on moving very quickly. So just try to get one that has plus three to mindfulness, which is going to give you a lot of movement speed. So let's just segue into her skill tree, starting off with her green tree. From this, you're going to want personal space. We are going to be using a shotgun after all, so this is going to give you a lot more damage. Like I said, the energy does deal splash damage, so getting this is pretty damn good. It's basically going to increase the damage by 20%, as well as give you a little bit of damage reduction, which is still not going to prevent yourself from one-shotting yourself with the energy, but... It's the thought that counts. Samsara, these points are a little bit controversial as you will be whiffing your action skill most of the time. So I don't know if you really want to spend your points here, but uh, whenever I do actually use my action skill on enemies, I do proc this and it's very, very easy to max out because with ties that bind, uh, you can pretty much max out your stacks if you find a decent mob. And these stacks last for 20 seconds, so it's more than enough time for you to perpetually keep them up. But if you're one of those people that literally never wants to use their action skill, you're just going to whiff it endlessly, then these points are completely wasted. You should just put them into whatever else you want. They are leftover points anyway. You're going to want to put 3 out of 3 into Mindfulness. This is what's going to give you that insane movement speed, as well as Vigor. Whenever you get a kill, this is going to give you 10% movement speed, not just to you, but your teammates as well. So, for example, if you have a Zane in your team, they'll probably benefit from this as well. So that's really nice. Moving on to our red tree, there is a lot of things that we want in here, mainly forceful expression, but we'll get to that in a second. You want to pick up steady hands, this is going to help with the accuracy loss of the energy just a little bit. Tempest is a no-brainer, you need this in every single Amara build pretty much. Dread, really nice, gives you 15% gun damage for 8 seconds whenever you actually use your action skill. Speaking of which, we're going to pick up our action skill, Ties That Bind. Deep Well is really nice, it's going to give us a decent increase in our mag size for pretty much all of our weapons. Indiscriminate is going to help us clear out mobs. This combined with the ricochet that comes from the Anarchy innately is amazing. You're definitely going to want 5 out of 5 in sustainment. This is what's going to help keep you alive with the help of Forceful Expression. This is going to give you bonus damage based on your action skill element, so you're basically going to be shooting even more elemental damage out of your gun, which is going to help keep you alive. And finally, with your last few points, we're going to dive into the blue tree. The only thing I really like from this tree is Stillness of Mind. You can alternatively just pick up Soul Sap if you want to and use these points elsewhere. Having Transcendier is really going to help you with bosses, as well as a couple points into Restless. So this is the spec that I have found the most success with. You literally don't even need to use your brain, to be honest. You don't even need this much move speed. Like, the Anarchy does so much damage that you can literally just stand still and one-shot everything, pretty much. Now, before I end the video, I want to quickly talk about the Recursion, because this is a really popular weapon to use with Amara, and it is incredibly strong. The thing is, guys, I really don't like it. I don't like the playstyle, I don't like the charge time, I don't like having to sprint, get all this momentum, jump, charge my shot, try to land a crit, whatever. I really don't like that. I It's gimmicky. Uh, if you like it or if you can stomach that type of gameplay, you can go ahead and pick this up. It is really good. Like, objectively, it's amazing. 
but it's just not my style. I, I prefer having the anarchy. The anarchy is to Amara what the stagecoach is to Flack. It's basically an elemental stagecoach. And I just kind of like it. It's satisfying to use, but the recursion is not for me. Uh, but if you like it, then go ahead and use it. I know Moxie made a video on a very, very similar build where he was using recursion and one-shot mobs and everything. But I just really don't like using the weapon, guys. And another huge downside for me is that for single targets, this is really, really bad. This only works if you have a bunch of different enemies bundled up together. It doesn't really one-shot regular mobs all by itself, and that's kind of annoying. Because the Anarchy does the same thing. If the enemies are grouped up together, you have Indiscriminate plus Nth Degree. It's just going to one-shot most of the mobs anyway. So, definitely has less range than the Recursion, obviously. But, the damage more than makes up for it, and the ease of use as well. But either way, I do have uh, two of them right here. They're both the same, just have different anointments. One has an ASC, and the other one has a Radiation Mag. So you can use Cryo have radiation on your mag and then have your element from forceful expression and both your grenade and your shield so you can actually shoot all five elements at the same time with an ASC next to mag bonus uh, recursion it's pretty nutty and it's it's really good also I forgot to mention guys that if you do want to try all of this out for yourself I will be leaving a link to my save file in the video description so if you're on pc you can go ahead and click that link and download the save and try it out for yourself and if you guys want to get your hands on these saves before i even make a video about them then be sure to click the discord link in the video description and join my discord go check the borderlands tabs all my builds are in the pinned messages of the borderlands channel also in the description is a link to my patreon i want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons for their continued support it is amazing thank you guys so so very much i really deeply appreciate it and if you want to support me directly that is the best way of doing so well guys thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video i hope all this trouble was worth it i will be working on zane next there's a lot of stuff i have to test on him i have spent way too much trying to get perfect gear for amara Moe's, and flak so I've barely had time to work on Zane, but trust me, I will be coming back with him, and I will be making some very, very spicy content. So for now, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care.